Shalom Vacha. How are you doing, guys? So, um, something very, very deep that uh, I wanted to share. A very interesting thing that um, that uh, happened to me yesterday, that came to me yesterday when I, uh, like, before I went to sleep, it was already very late around uh, like um, 4 30 i think a.m and uh, and i wanted to sleep but when i put my head on the bed um, so i uh, just felt like uh, i must write something i really i felt like i need to write down some uh, some things that came to me and um, and I wrote something about um, about beauty something in English and I, I wrote few lines and um, and it went very very high very fast um, without me even planning the very deep understanding that hit me when I uh, when I wrote it, so I'll um, I'll read it to you and I'll explain to you one step after after the other what I went through in my uh, in my crazy nights. So I first of all I I wrote, is this beauty for real? Like when you talk about beauty, so there are many aspects to beauty. There are many many ways to to understand beauty. Beauty can be physical beauty, it can be spiritual beauty, it can be beauty that is known to everyone as beauty and it can be just like your own taste, your own understanding of, of what beauty is. So a question on beauty that I was thinking of was, is this beauty for real? Is that beauty, is a real beauty? And then I wrote, I answered that question, I wrote, it is higher than any mountain top. It's not a physical beauty. You cannot look at beauty and think about it in a physical way. It's higher than every mountain top. It's the beauty of the highest, of highest truth. And then... Um, I wrote it's the it's the beauty it is the beauty of highest truth in its glory and then so and I finished writing that text with the word glory and then I stopped when I realized that I'm talking about beauty and then I said that it's the beauty of the highest truth so very fast I realized and understood that um, I'm talking about the spiritual beauty, right? Like I, like I explained to you. And then I mentioned that the beauty is the beauty that comes out of the truth. And then I wrote, in its glory. So we have beauty, we have truth, and we have glory. And then I said... To myself like I realized suddenly that that thought came to me that the word glory in English starts with the letter G and when I wrote it down when I wrote it so I wrote glory opens with a G and when I wrote the word open in English suddenly it looks to me like I'm writing in Hebrew because the letter O when I wrote open so I didn't finish writing it like the letter zero that is a complete circle I just like made it like um, like E but but um, the opposite so it looks like the letter P in Hebrew or like a letter Shin when you write the letter Shin. So, and then I wrote the letter P, open, and then the letter P also, it felt to me like I'm writing in Hebrew. 
and then the letter E again, like all that seems like an E, and then the letter E, and like all the letters, even though that I wrote them in English because I wrote the word open, I felt like I was writing them in Hebrew. Every one of the letters, even though I wrote it in English, seemed to my eyes like I was writing them in Hebrew. And then I said, glory opens with a G, and G is a sign with a shape of nine. It's a letter that looks like the letter nine, right? The letter G, when you write it, G. So it looks like a nine, very close to the letter to the number nine. And the number nine I wrote represents the truth. In the language of the Torah, in the language of Hebrew, the numeral value of the word truth is nine. When you write the word truth in Hebrew, so you write the letter Aleph, that the numeral value of the letter Aleph is one. And then the letter Mem, that is equal to 40. But usually when you write down numeral value, you throw away the zeros. So from the letter Mem, you stay with the 4. And then Taf is 400. Again, you drop the zeros and you have 4, 4, and 1. So it's Emet. Emet is 9. So when I wrote the word glory with the letter G, and it hit me that G starts with 9, and the glory that I was talking was a glory that represents the truth. That's how I wrote it. And then when I wrote the word open, it looks to me like I'm writing in Hebrew, even though I was writing in English. And then I realized that the letter G looks like the letter 9 that represents the truth, because truth is 9. And then... I realized something very, very deep. And then in that moment, I stopped writing in English and I started to write in Hebrew. And then I'll explain to you and I'm going to translate what that I wrote just to let you see and understand what's, what's going on. And then I wrote, it's amazing. I wrote in Hebrew words in English. The words that I wrote in English, I wrote them in in Hebrew, that was my feeling, like I explained to you. And the holy language builds the creation. The holy language of Hebrew is illuminating its own wisdom, even in the nation's language. And existing the, the holiness between the nations, just in a hidden way, like no one knows when he speaks English that actually English is built on Hebrew. When you write in English, you don't see the fact that the letters are, are coming from the same shapes of, of the Hebrew letters. And those are the letters of the Torah that are switching colors and, and flipping sides. Because, for an example, when I wrote and then I'm like writing for myself. When you're going to write the word open in English, you can see that there is a purpose to that, to that word. Because the word open for sure, we all going to understand that is a very powerful word, right? To open something. So the letter O that opens the word open looks like the letter Samech. It's a circle. And that's how you write the letter Samech. The Samech represents infinity. And the letter P of the word open looks like the letter P, Sofit. P, Sofit is a letter that sounds like P, and it's P, we call it P, and in English you call the same sounds of a letter, you call it P, and in Hebrew it's P. So the letter P looks like the final letter um, pay in Hebrew and it's in the opposite direction but only when you write it in the opposite direction and then again it looks like a nine when you flip the letter P to the other direction again it looks like a nine and 
we're calling it pace of fit. So pace of fit means if you write down the word pace of fit and the letter pay that is in the end of a word, if you write it in Hebrew, it likes piece of it. And P is my mouth. It's the mouth of a person that says the last thing. And that's why it looks like nine, because nine represents the truth. And the truth is the final word. So the thing is that I realized that, like that we know, that the Creator is, um, is sending His own light into our realities and it comes in very mysterious ways. It comes and penetrates into our life in ways that we cannot understand. It's like you don't know and you don't recognize and it's sometimes very very hard to see and to put your finger on it but when you listen to the voice of creation suddenly you see that many many things are not flat and not simple and not really as they look and like i told you the world that we live in is a creation and that creation been created by the Creator by His power of speech. And when He spoke, He spoke in the holy language, in the language of the Hebrews, the language that He taught our ancestors, that Adam and Eve were talking. That is the language that the Bible been given to the nation of Israel and to the whole wide world. And in that language, the Creator is speaking with his angels and using that language and the shape of the letters he created the whole wide world now those are like when you try to a person that knows like coding in computer or science science um, the people are writing things in codes like you use certain letters to 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 build to compose something like in music you you build something with certain signs and those signs when when you let them go when you set them free suddenly they catch different shapes but when you write them down you write them down in words you write them down in signs like like in music you write down the signs but in the end suddenly someone takes his instruments and start playing and then it's something totally else right it's not what that you wrote it's the music that comes out of the of the paper so also when the creator said there's going to be a world also when the creator said i want this to happen like that and like this and this way and that way everything that the creator said came out in his words but not a whole different shape after it but still the letters are the foundation they are the structure of the creation and so for an example the 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 colors if you want to say blue if you want to say red if you want to say yellow so every one of those colors really inside of it is holding the letters of the word that is the name of that color and especially in hebrew you can see that and when you go into that wisdom and understand that words are not empty and that letters are not empty you can come very very close and deep with your understanding to to know the real will and the and the highest intention of creation of the creator from us and it really helped me to understand that and to see that and i think that it is a very good thing for a person to meditate with words once in a while when you have some time just to sit to lean back to close your eyes and to think about a certain word or a certain sentence a verse or something like that that inspires you that give you strength and, and inspiration 
and just to repeat it like songs for an example a person can take a song that he likes and just to sing the same line over and over and or the same word and it gives a lot of power a lot a lot a lot a lot of power and a couple of days ago i explained in a class that i gave on the zoom um, platform i explained that when a person is praying so he's sending his words out to the air and you don't always see the outcomes of your prayer but if you're going to let your faith guide you and explain to you the future of every prayer, of every word you said in your prayer, you'll just come to that very high and deep understanding that your prayers are being accepted all the time. So it means that if you said in your prayer, please Hashem help us, now Hashem took that prayer already. The angels already took that prayer somewhere else and that request will not come back empty-handed. It is being answered or else Hashem would not put those words into your mouth. The reason why the Creator allowed you in the first place to speak out and to express your thoughts and your feelings and your desire and your, and, and, and your dreams is for them to be accepted by Him in heaven and for him to answer them that's the purpose of a prayer a prayer is a connection and when you connect yourself to someone you're being connected to him and then your connections your connection is already bringing the results the great um, requests that you asked are being answered so now you say please Hashem save us please Hashem protect us and you don't see how it affects the world but some other person in a different country in a different state suddenly is being saved he's being saved from a ticket he's being saved from 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 a car accident he's being saved from from sinning from failing from humiliating himself or others and you saved him with your prayer the, the fact that you can and the fact that you cannot see how those things works does not cancel their existence does not mean that they don't work and apply like that and when you say things and when you ask for things those things are taking place and this is why when a person is praying and even if he's repeating one word just saying, save us, save us, save us, help us, help, 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 help. If you're standing and praying the Shemona from the Sidur, and you're holding in the word, Refa'enu, heal us, and you're just going to repeat, Refa'enu, 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 Refa'enu. Every time you said Refa'enu, you brought down piles of health to people's life piles and, and tons and, 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 and buckets of healing and potions of, 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 of recovery and, and, and health. And it depends in your simple faith, in your simple understanding of who the Creator is and what really the prayer means, that when you pray, you're being answered. And we should go like blind. We should count on Hashem, on the Creator, and just to keep on asking, if you want, like, let's say a person now found himself struggling with a certain difficulty, with a certain pain, with a certain challenge. Okay, take that challenge to prayer. Go and pray for that. Like, okay, you went through some crazy situation and you feel like um, poverty is eating you from every direction or fear or anxiety, pressure of like, okay, take that pain of yours and express it in prayer and ask for for everyone to 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 enjoy what you hope for yourself as well use the pain that you experience to open your heart to pray not only for yourself just for the rest of the world as well if you're afraid to be sick so please Hashem help us that no one will get sick that no one will be hurt anymore that no one will be sick that no one will lack of his health and no one will be scared for his life please Hashem if you suffer from 
from lack of money, from poverty, you have shorts in your incomes, please Hashem, that no one will go through this panic, through this pressure. Please make everyone happy and healthy and stable and, and wealthy and that no one going to lack a thing and that husbands will be able to support their wives and children and that women will be able to bring an income to their houses as well and the children will not ever experience poverty and hunger express your feelings and by expressing your feelings you're going to change reality for many many other people even without seeing it and sometimes you ask okay so why if i'm praying for myself and for my troubles i'm not being answered and someone else is being answered like in australia i'm sitting here and i'm praying and someone over there in Australia will be answered, like, I'm happy for him, but it's not fair. I, when I'm going to be answered, I also need my salvation. The thing is that sometimes, like, you go to, to a wealthy person, to an investor or something like that, and you tell him, listen, I, I need to go out of my debt. I need, to, I need to pay, like, I need tons of money. And he tells you, okay, how much do you have right now? And you say, like, I like with a lot of effort, I can gather, let's say, 1,000, let's say, 10,000, and I need a million. And it tells you, okay, you know what? Give me the 10,000 and let me work with it. And then you go and you invest those 10,000 in many places on different things that he knows because he's a real professional. He knows exactly what to do with your money, how to work with it, that it will grow. And then the money grows, and after a while, and, in, and, and you, in that period of time that your investment is in his hands, you can doubt the fact that he's working with your money. You can question on his loyalty. You're not sure what he is doing and what he did with your money, and if it's ever going to come back to you. You don't know. But when we are talking about the Creator, we're talking about someone we can trust. When we talk about putting our prayers in the hands of heaven, we know that over there in heaven, there is someone who wants to answer and to accept and answer all our requests and to fulfill all our dreams. Just that sometimes you need to take your prayer and to work with it. And the way for him to work with it is to save many lives of other people with your prayer. And then he's increasing the merits, the privilege that you have by using your prayer to save lives of other people. And then, instead of having just the merit of praying for salvation, after a while, after saving other people with your prayers, you will suddenly going to have merits of saving lives of other people in the exact same situation that you're asking to be redeemed from. So basically what the Creator is doing is making piles of, of beautiful, amazing rights and merits for you, for those to stand and protect you on the things and on the matters that you need salvation. And this is the beauty of how the world works, that the Creator is standing in a different position behind the the curtains of of darkness and he sees all and he understands all and he works in fantastic mysterious ways to bring all the whole wide world to its completion and we should be confident that we're in good hands and to pray for the redemption and for the salvation and to understand and to believe that things are way way deeper then we grasp and understand and that we should put our trust and count by sending prayers toward heaven, praying for all the good things that we wish to have and to achieve and to remember that even if prayer has not been accepted yet, we should just continue praying and not giving up on our dreams and on our hopes and on our uh, deep understanding of how things supposed to work do you have something to say most of the time I have no clue how to pray this is something very simple to pray 
if we want to pray, the most simple thing to do is just to learn how to express our feelings and our thoughts. You want to learn how to pray. Let's say that your stomach aches. So you say, Hashem, Hashem, my stomach aches. Can you heal me? In your own language, if you speak English, in English you speak Hebrew, Hebrew, you speak Deutsch, speak in Deutsch, you speak uh, um, Arabic, say to, to, to Hashem in Arabic, please Hashem, heal me, please Hashem, protect me, you don't have money, okay, please Hashem, I don't have money, can you give me money, can you help me with money? I have this lousy job. I don't like that job. Please, Hashem, can you help me to find a better job? You have issues in your house. You don't have good relationship with your soulmate, with your spouse. Okay, Hashem, I don't know what to do. We're fighting all the time. Can you help me not, not, to, not to say those bad comments all the time, those rebukes that are hurting her feelings? But on the other end... I, if I'm not saying those things, I feel so like hurt and I like feel that no one cares about my will and my understandings and please Hashem, can you help me that I'll find better ways how to, how to communicate and how to love my, my spouse and that she will care about my will as well and that she will care about my dream and my hope, like whatever. You need to talk from your heart <coughs> on every simple thing that is crossing your mind and shaking your heart you need to talk oh Hashem my children I'm worried about my children oh Hashem this plague the coronavirus what's going to be with that please Hashem help us please Hashem heal the world please help us with every simple thing that um, on every simple thing that cross your mind you should build a prayer upon and just to say and just to talk from the bottom of your heart and to say what you feel and to express your good and holy desire to be answered and just to put it down, break it down in your own simple words. Please Hashem, help my friend. Please Hashem, help my company. Please Hashem, help my, my community. Please Hashem, help the world. Please Hashem, save the dolphins. Please Hashem, um, I haven't watched uh, Rocky Six. Can you let me see Rocky Six? No, I'm kidding. I don't want to watch Rocky Six. You just need to pray for things that your heart desires. Please, Hashem, what's going to be with my car? Please, Hashem, what's going to be with my health? Please, Hashem, what's going to be with the Holy Temple? Where, Hashem, what's going to be with you? Where are you, Hashem? Just to express your feelings and, and your heart. That is the highest and most elevated prayer in the world. Someone wants to say something else positive. You want me to, to try to read your English? Thank you so much. I've been wondering where all of my prayers are sometimes. Yeah, they're, they're growing uh, flowers in our backyard. Thank you. Thank you for this perspective of his ways are higher and deeper than ours if you would just know I must contradict what you just wrote and uh, not because you're wrong you just not you're not putting it completely right you're saying that his perspective that his ways are higher than uh, deeper than ours it's not true just our level of awareness is not reaching the complete um, intention of, of His means that we're not aware to how deep we are located inside of Him. That's what I'm trying to, to rephrase in your, in your wonderful words. It's true that we can't see all the way, but it doesn't mean that we're not there all the way. It means that when you want something good to happen, so the Creator use, is using your goodwill to create goodness elsewhere. So it's you that actually the Creator of those good things that are taking place elsewhere. 
And if, God forbid, a person is falling to sadness, to despair, or acting violent as well, the outcomes of, uh, of his rage and anger is the fuel to burn the world down to ashes. And therefore, to say that we're not as high as him or as deep as him, it's not true, just that we're not aware to the consequences and to our true potential while being so deep in, in his heart. Thank you. You're so sweet, everyone. I saw that. We answered that. Yes, Veronica, it is a privilege to be here right now. You're right. It's a privilege. Every people, every two people that are connecting themselves to, to do something good together. So the light and the energy of, of, of their unity, of their connection, is, um, is way higher than we can imagine. It's, um, it's, um, it's much, much stronger than if separated individuals would work on their own when we're holding hands with our intention and when we are trying to do good things to the world when we do that in unity and with mutual respect and love and appreciation and gratitude to each other and like with love and we're all bond to each other so then uh, great things um, greater than the power of every individual are taking place in the world. Thank you guys. Thank you for your support. I appreciate your donations and your and your help. And um, and may Hashem answer our prayer and open those wonderful wings of eagles to take us to a better future, to a future of prosperity and happiness and joy. And with no sorrow, with no pain, with no grief and uh, sadness. Amen. The world is not existing. Because Olam Milchon Elem, the world is just blocking the light of truth. The world called Alma de Shika, world of light, is just a fake. We're just inside of an illusion. It's just a fake. We're just inside of an illusion.